Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Rulebook. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to this podcast and you're watching it on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me right now. I definitely appreciate it. Okay, so what is this week's episode going to be? I wanted to talk about the strike, but how the strike affects content creators and influencers. I'm also an actress, as some of you know, but I really transitioned into content creation around 2021 and social media was always something that I really wanted to do, but I just didn't know exactly how to do it or what I wanted to do. And this was back when Instagram was the only real channel that you could be using and it was just photos and I didn't really have anyone to take my photos. So blah, 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 blah. But I was much more interested in comedy and performing. And so I entered the game super, super late, but As someone who is a actress and a content creator, I wanted to talk about how the SAG strike affects content creators. And just last week, the New York Times released this article, Hollywood strike leaves influencers sidelined and confused. And I did a little video on my TikTok and my Instagram page just breaking down what it said, but it really was interesting because it was talking about how a lot of the regulations and rules that SAG had put out about social media were sort of confusing to content creators, especially those of them who are not in the union. Union. Full disclosure, I'm currently non-union. Uh, and last week when I wanted to make this episode of the podcast, I went back and forth with whether or not I should even discuss a certain movie that has a doll in it. I went so far as to barely say the title only because I didn't want to be accused of creating scab content which leads me to another thing. What is scab content? So the word scab is something that um, I believe originated like in like 1800s or 1700s, London or Britain. Should I Google that for you guys? I mean, you understand it's an old timey word and it's for people who basically went against the union or formed scab unions, people who basically sided with the employer instead of siding with the rest of the union who was only trying to fight for the employee's benefit, right? So that is where the term comes from if it sounds a little bizarre to you. That's why. In the New York Times article, they interviewed this content creator, Diana Giulietti, something like that. I think she is best known for being the ooh ooh tada girl. She did like OOTD, she called it ooh ooh tada. (laughs) Very clever, very funny. And she is an actress. She was constantly um, dancing or singing on the platform. And I think she has a podcast and whatever. She really blew up. She has over a million followers on TikTok and she's non-union. And she was talking about how she turned down a bunch of promotional work recently due to the SAG strike because she didn't want to be seen as scabbing because SAG also put out this notice that if you do create content and you're non-union about projects that have been struck, you will be jeopardizing your chances to join SAG in the future and they are not joking. I was scrolling through TikTok and I came across an account, I think it was called Scab Content or Scabbers of TikTok. And it was a bunch of reposted videos of people like using the Barbie sounds or using different sounds from Struck Project or collaborating with companies that were owned by certain Struck companies like Disney or Warner Brothers or Sony or attending premieres. And people were resharing their videos so that later on when the strike eventually ends, When those creators go to join SAG, I think they will be in for a rude awakening. Although, who really knows? Because unless you're just very unlucky or you have that many followers that someone sees uh, enough people see your video and they report you to SAG, (laughs) you're screwed. Because actually SAG does have an email, I believe, where you can send or report people who aren't following the regulations, and I believe they have a specific one for influencers. I didn't initially uh, think about how this would affect content creators, just whatever, I have other problems on my mind. But yeah, it makes sense because content creation and social media has really become a massive part of the entertainment industry, especially following the pandemic in 2020. So it does make sense that content creators would wanna support SAG because what affects those artists on that level in Hollywood will definitely trickle down into social media because as you know, SAG is fighting for um, the companies to not be able to replicate our likeness using AI. And I think that's something that will probably happen on social media as well. Everyone's talking about unions right now. Reality stars are talking about unionizing. Hello, Bethany Frankel. And influencers too, I I know, In the past, they've tried to unionize and social media really is still the wild, wild west out there and the internet is as well. 
So we shall see what will happen. But it is interesting that although many content creators, I would say most content creators are probably not in the union, they are expected to follow these rules. And uh, if you listen to The Toast, another podcast that I sometimes check out, and usually I enjoy a lot of their takes, they had not the best take (laughs) about how every man should just be for himself. Because I believe SAG put out a notice talking about how these companies probably will go to content creators to have them fill spots or create promotional content that an actor might have, you know, normally been paid to do or approached to do had it not been a SAG strike. And they were talking about how, well, it's every man for himself. How can you turn down these huge opportunities? And um, why does SAG think we're all in this together? Or they read a quote of SAG saying, we're all in this together. And one of the girls was like, since when? (laughs) And while I can understand sort of the sentiment that a lot of content creators who maybe aren't as informed as they should be about the subject might initially feel like, well, I'm going to do what's best for me because, you know, what benefit do I really receive? I'm not in the union. I don't benefit from any of the what people in the union benefit from. I don't get health insurance from this union. I don't get anything. And now you want me to turn down paid work. But the thing is, you have to think long term. You have to think about the greater good. And to be honest, that's what unions are. Because every time someone crosses a picket line and people are out there fighting for fair pay and for benefits and fair treatment, you're going against that. And that's, that's not the side of history you want to be on. Unions, whether we're in them or not, labor unions benefit all of us, any of us who have ever been employees. So think about that. Unionizing is a thing that has protected a lot of us from being exploited. It's the thing that got us the eight-hour workday. And maybe a lot of you don't like the eight-hour workday. I don't love an eight-hour workday, but it's better than a 15-hour workday, right? Or it's better than a seven-day work week, right? So unions really are important and they have a long history and yeah, I think obviously don't create scab content, stand with the unions as much as you possibly can and um, try to navigate these sometimes confusing guidelines. When I posted my video on social media talking about the article, I did mention how I do find some of the guidelines confusing because obviously they're not going through a fine tooth comb of like, what sort of content would be considered promotional. And the thing is, they were mostly just telling content creators, just don't create videos about struck work. Meaning like, well, can I not use a trending sound that everyone's using on TikTok right now? I'm not exactly promoting anything. I'm just sort of jumping on this trending sound. But I don't think SAG (laughs) really knows the ins and outs of TikTok and like the culture over there and what that's about. And maybe if you're a content creator, you might not see your video as being promotional initially, but you don't want to run that risk, right, of offending the most powerful union in Hollywood, especially if you have these dreams of one day joining. And I think a lot of content creators do. And that's the thing about the acting career. I didn't enter acting until I was about 25 years old. So I'd already gone to college. I'd already studied other things. And it wasn't until I was really an adult that I was able to... uh, attempt to explore these aspirations because no one really supported me doing this and I didn't have the confidence either at that time so I can't completely say point I can't really point any fingers except at myself but anyway it was something that I did explore in my mid to mid 20s early 30s and then the pandemic happened and all these things happened and it actually led me on the path to social media it led me towards this desire to take back control I wanted to take control of the sort of projects that I'd be in. I'd, I wanted to still have the opportunity to create content that was funny or that I found valuable. And if no one was going to cast me, then I would just cast myself in these videos that I was doing. And even though I didn't enter the social media game, as I said, until like 2021, no, not even 2022, really, me becoming a content creator wasn't ever me turning away from acting. It was just me trying to carve out my own place in the entertainment industry and content creation has done that for a lot of people and you can find success there and it's not that there's any guarantee there either it's still you know up to the powers that be but 
I think you have a lot more control over your career when you decide what sort of things you're posting, how much you post and where you put them and then the community that you do build for yourself. And so I do think that social media has empowered a lot of artists in that way. But in the same way, it's also, you know, diluted our work, right? Because even scrolling through the comments of this New York Times article, people were like, oh God, wah, wah, wah. Who cares about these influencers, right? Who are now, they can't show up in full capacity on social media. Thank God. Get rid of them all, you know, like shitting on their dreams, basically. And then mocking them for having these Hollywood pipe dreams, right? Like, oh yeah, so so acting is the goal. Hollywood is the goal. Psh, you know, how, how dare they dream so big? Like you guys are just glorified sales reps on the internet. But to be honest, not every creator who's on social media is just pushing lip gloss. I mean, that's not the kind of content that I strive to create personally. I'm not saying I wouldn't. Because if Chanel lip gloss or Dior lip gloss or who, Sephora lip gloss wants to hit me up, I'm a veil. But I'm just saying, like, that, that should, if that's the majority of your content, that you're just selling stuff to people that they really don't need, then yeah, okay, I could see um, a lot of people's ex sheer exhaustion from that. But I think there's a lot of creators, especially now, whose content is not that. I can really only speak from my perspective, but most of the things that I try to share, I try to share things that I think will be funny or entertaining or at least valuable in some way, whether it's just a funny video, whether it's a New York City rule or whether it's, you know, what I learned online this week. Like I try to share something that is usable versus you have to pay $15.99 and all my videos are the same. Um, but it's really not the creator's fault that someone would rather watch a Zara haul than a video about current events or social commentary. So you know what? <laughs> Lay off the influencers or content creator. That's another thing that I had an issue with. Like why would they say influencers? It's not really affecting the influencers. It's affecting the content creators. Influencers can still sell. They can still sell lip gloss, but it's content creators who maybe can't talk about what they thought of a certain movie or a certain show, or they can't use a trending sound, or they can't, you know what I mean? Anyone who wants to talk about pop culture, I think the lines are very blurred. I myself have a background in journalism, but I'm still like not comfortable talking about movies right now. I don't work for a publication. I'm just me. So I don't know. And I don't want to get comments that say scab content under my videos. So what is rule number 36 you might be asking? Okay, look, so for this one, I'm going to elicit the help of one Miss Fran Drescher, or actually I'm getting this straight from, from the horse's mouth, Miss Fran Fine. She says, never make contact with the public toilet, never wear musk oil to the zoo, and never ever cross a picket line. I think if you're confused, if a piece of content that you are thinking about putting out could potentially get you in some sort of trouble with the union, then don't post it. Simple as that. You never ever want to be seen as not supporting this movement, especially if you are an entertainer or a performer. And yeah, I can understand that maybe SAG hasn't been the most welcoming to content creators. And it really wasn't until 2021 that some influencers were invited to join under like this influencer clause. But if you really do have dreams of one day becoming a certain type of performer, especially one who is going to be acting in television and film, then you do have to think long term. And hopefully the strike ends sooner rather than later. And it's not SAG's fault. Obviously, content creators might feel a certain type of way being asked to abide by these rules, but really it's these big companies who are trying to exploit these workers and as we all know, that sort of shit trickles down. So help the performers and the actors fight that good fight and don't cross the picket line and don't create scab content and don't get caught up in accidentally posting something that is promotional when you didn't see it that way because psh, let me tell you, it ain't worth it. Just delete the video. And even if you're seeing this now and you didn't know about this, go back and delete that content if you can because it is not worth it and do not take jobs that will be seen as scabbing. That's, that's my advice this week. Hopefully this clarifies some things. I'm going to leave a link to some of the articles that I read in preparation for this episode in case you are confused about anything, but 
please feel free to DM me and I'll give you my most informed opinion as I possibly can about what I think is promotional or not. So please let me know. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and follow me at Serious Actress across all social media platforms. All right. Bye, guys.